Hello everyone, this is Alex from alexlancer.com and guys, Codeigniter 4 is out and I'm really really excited to see all the new stuff that all the contributors have, have done because the framework has been completely rewritten and I just want to dive deep and see what's going on here. So, first of all, today we're going to build a really simple blog and uh, see what's to, to see the, the new stuff and the new syntax that Codeigniter 4 is using. Uh, we will see how to communicate with the database and play a little bit with the, with the route, routing. So, first thing to notice is that server, requi server requirements are, uh, ha have been changed, of course. So, the, the minimum required version for PHP is 7.2. Uh, today, I will be using ZAMP server for, on my local machine. And I also encourage you to go to the ApacheFriends.org, download the latest ZAMP, Mine ZAMP, my version of ZAMP is not the latest, but it will do the job just fine. So how can you how can you check if your ZAMP is compatible, let's say, with a, with a newer to, to run the new version of Codeigniter 4? First of all, if you don't have ZAMP installed on your machine, please navigate to this website and download the appropriate uh, files to your operating system. Once you download it, of course you have to run it. So, open ZAMP control panel, start Apache and MySQL server. And then just navigate to localhost. What you will see here is a PHP info button where you can click and check which PHP version currently is installed on your system. On my system is 7.2, so I'm fine. Okay, the, uh, this one is out of the way. And let's go and download the Codeigniter for framework. There are different ways you can do it. One of them is using Composer. Another one is navigating to this link. I will leave it in, down in the description and download it manually. I will use the manual method just for the sake of this tutorial because I don't want to cover the installation of Composer and to save us some time. So let's go. Click on the source code. Let's check it out in our folder. Let's unzip it. Get all the files. Copy all these files. And now go to find your ZAMP installation folder. Mine is ZAMP2. And let's go htdocs. And let's create a new folder here. The new folder will be called, you can name it whatever you like, I will name it CI4 YouTube. I will go inside of this folder and paste all the files here. Okay, cool. So now, let's see what's going on just after pasting the files inside this folder. We can go localhost and CI4 YouTube. Okay, so the first change looks like if you navigate inside inside the installation folder, you still don't see nothing. The main change that I've seen so far is that 
your app runs once you are inside the public folder. So once we go to the public folder, we can see the welcome message of Code Igniter. And this makes total sense because most of the PHP applications run on Apache web servers, which have public HTML folder, which is accessible. Actually, all the files inside the public HTML folder are, can be accessed by, by typing something, the correct URL. So for instance, if you go back to the root folder, we can see the env file. env file is the file that stores all the critical information of our, or the, all the sensitive information of our project. Uh, one of which is database username and password. And of course, we don't want this to be publicly available. So what we have to do is we have to say to our server that the, the public folder is the, is the folder from where our application runs so that user any, any visitor actually of our website cannot access all the files outside the public. So what we have to do, we can adjust ZAMP very easily for that. Open again your control panel and let's go to the config button of the Apache module. Click Apache HTTPD conf, scroll scroll down after load modules you will find you will find a document root that points to zamp ht docs folder what we're gonna do now we will say that our root folder is cr4 youtube dot public Okay, and it's exactly the same right here, type here. So let's save this. Let's restart Apache. Man MySQL, just to be sure. So now we don't need to write all this. Now our local host points directly to the public folder. So now I cannot access any more env file. It does not exist because it's outside of the public folder. So the next thing we have to do is let's actually open our code editor and check out the files. So I will do it here is my folder. I will open up Atom. This is my preferred code editor. And you can use whichever you like, of course. So, as you can see in our public folder, we have very little files, just the index.php and the first thing I want to do is copy this env file because this is just a um, demo, demo file, it's not doing anything right now. So if I duplicate it and make it .env now where it now this this is how you enable it after that uh, the first thing we have to do everything inside of .env file right now is uh, is commented out so the first thing we have to do is an uh, uncomment ci environment 
and set it to development. This will enable the, this will tell to the framework that we need to see all the debug information in case we do some in case we have some type or some error in our code because when it is in production you will see no you won't see actual error you will see some friendly user friendly message saying something something went wrong but you won't be able to debug it so set this to development and this will will enable one more new new feature of code igniter of code igniter 4 specifically so let's refresh our local host and no it did not enable okay let me check again development development okay so the reason that i don't see what i want to see is because there is one more thing that we have to enable i guess it is inside the app folder config and app.php you see by default code igniter has a base URL, localhost, column eight, port 8080. We don't use port 8080, we are using just a localhost. So let's save this. And let's go again to our web page. Okay, now we see, you can see this developer, how to, how to call it, like a debug bar where you can see different technical information about your application. We will use it in a little, a little bit uh, after. So next thing that um, I would like you to show is actually, let's start creating our project. So at this point, we have installed code igniter it, it is running everything looks good the first thing that we will start with is going back to our project closing this for now the app folder no actually we need the app folder this is where everything all the files that we need are stored so the controllers let's go to the controllers if you are coming from code igniter 3 this might look familiar to you if you are not code igniter is an mvc uses mvc pattern for its for 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 its functionality mvc means model view control controller so each of the controllers each of the controllers help you build um, the the logic of your application let's say now we want to build a block system so in this block system we will have two type of entities let's say one of them is the block and um, dynamic posts that we want to, to view and to create. And another one, and another entity is pages. This will be just static pages that will, let's say it will be a home page and an about page. So for each entity of a website this is how i how i see the use how i how i'm using the um, controllers i will create a separate controller so let's start with the pages let's go to controllers folder and create new file pages with capital php and let's copy 
the home controller, whatever it has inside, to avoid not waste time for typing it all over again. Let's copy it here. So, this is how you start. By default, well, also you have to rename the class name. The class name must be always the same as the file name. This is how CodeIgniter works. So, once we created this controller, we can go to the to our page and say localhost slash pages. Yeah, it shows exactly the same stuff because we are rendering the same stuff. Let's say we remove this file, this line from index function, from index method rather, and let's say just echo this is pages class or controller let's check again refresh this is pages controller awesome so back to our controller if we would create another another method let's say function by the way you don't have to specify public function by by default if you don't specify the type of function it is considered to be public it is good it is a good practice to write it though but i don't always do it so let's say functions show me show me and let's give it a variable page and let's say by default this page equals home and we say echo this is this page this page is page semicolon so what what uh, what this method does is that we go if we go again here and now we extend our URL and say pages show me you see now we get this page is home because the default variable of method show me is home but let's say we will specify about us this page is about us so just by writing the simple method we already created some sort of dynamic functionality to our application now let's make it more useful let's go to our views folder and let's create a folder inside here named pages okay this I created a file sorry for that let's create a folder pages inside pages folder let's create two files home.php and about.php let's also create in our views folder another folder for templates that will store our header and our footer so we don't have to write it in each and every file we create so create new folder templates templates um, let's create a new file inside there we will call header.php and one more footer.php in our header.php let's create an html block take the the last body and html remove it from header and move it to sorry i guess you don't see this 
and let's move it to to footer so for just to make things more easy and look and look a bit better let's use bootstrap for that what we need is just go to getting started with bootstrap 4 copy this page copy this line the css style sheet and let's go again to header and paste it inside our head section and also let's give it a title ci4 tutorial blog tutorial copy that uh, uh, save that and also copy all the javascript all the javascript and let's paste it inside the footer above the body tag the closing body tag okay so now that we have that let's see how how can we use it in our application so first of all let's go back to pages and let's use this simple function echo a view this is how you call a view inside the code igniter 4 it is a bit different from code igniter 3 so and now we have to specify the files so the view the view function by by default looks inside the views folder so if you have some structure inside the views folder you'll have to start from specifying your uh, your folders inside the view inside the view function so we have template let's call first header no need to specify .php let's copy this few times let's make this footer and between we need to call our page so we go to the pages folder and let's just copy this variable here okay we can remove this line and now if we go to pages let's say home let's create um, an h1 tag let's say home let's go to about page and also create h1 tag and say about us and let's see okay so we have an, our first error congratulations our first error has arrived so you see the debugging and the, the error reporting has has been changed also now you can click through different tabs i still don't know them very well what they show what they do so let's see what we can grab from here what information can we see from here first of all invalid file square brackets curly brackets actually zero search okay oh nice so you can search some error just by clicking on a search button search link here invalid formats code igniter view view render arguments so i think something's wrong with the file name that we have specified yes so about us does not exist but about exists okay this also didn't do the trick but let's see here system path view view.php arguments guys i'm sorry if you don't see if you see these fonts like really 
they're, they don't look clean maybe if I zoom yeah I guess this should be better so the path that's causing the problem is the template slash header.php and this is because we don't have folder template we have folder templates so let me go and change that to templates templates and let's run again our our application okay so finally we did it pages show me about I guess the same will show our home or even if we type home it's it also will show home so one thing we can do here is the example that I grabbed from Codeigniter official documents is that we can check either this page exists or not and if we if it does not exist then uh, we can throw a 404 error so let's go back here and just above this line uh, ab above the echo view I will paste this code so this code checks if the file named let's say home.php exists actually if it doesn't does not exist then throw this error and do not continue to try even to view these pages so let's see what happens now if we type something if we try to navigate to a page that does not exist let's say contact us contact okay so now we get a 404 error let me go back to unzoom it and cool so actually our static pages are already function fun, uh, are already functioning well so what i would suggest us to do let's just style them a little bit so we can enjoy the whole process i don't like looking like on uh, on simple unstyled html elements I don't like the way they look. I think coding, uh, not coding neither. Sorry, Bootstrap makes this job really easy. Even to even when you are developing something, even for yourself, it it is so easy to implement and to visualize the whole project much in a much better better way. So. let's go back to where we were, we were here let's go to show me okay so show me is now home by default and let's make this home page look a bit a bit a little bit nicer so let's go here and let's start by creating um, a section inside this section we will we will create a div called actually you know what let's go to there is no need to reinvent the wheel type here jumbotron jumbotron and just grab this code so once you get this code just paste, paste it inside the section and let's say ci4 block and let's write something like code igniter is awesome framework for creating fast web apps and let's give here a paragraph something like hey check out check out my first web app built with code igniter 4 
and let's give this okay leave it leave it for now leave it for now as it is so in the about page let's go just also create a section a div a container a container and now let's just grab some lorem ipsum actually i have lorem ipsum installed on my on my atom so let's go and create h3 about not h3 or i don't know why i use h3 h1 about us and give a paragraph lorem lorem ipsum yeah it's just an extension for uh, for an uh, atom you can find it lorem ipsum and install it also it helps create some dummy text and let's create one more here is learn more and again lorem awesome now let's go to our header and let's add a navigation bar so our navigation bar will be let's create a dark dark example also from grabbing it from the bootstrap website navbar and let's take something something simple yeah i think this will do so let's take this back to our project paste it here let's remove the disabled button let's remove actually end pricing and disabled buttons let's name this we don't need this home about us okay let's do just one more thing here let's wrap it all inside the container so let's create div container take this closing div and place it right before the nav tag closes and let's change light to dark so what we have now okay i like it the only thing i think we have to do is to wrap our jumbotron also inside the container so to do that we go to home page inside jumbotron div class container okay i think it's much better like that so now of course i don't think that anyone will ever say that pages slash show me slash about us is a normal url or a, or if it is a seo friendly url and i will totally agree with you that's why let's see the routing how it works how we can override the default behavior behavior of code igniter and simplify the stuff for us so for that we have to go to the app folder config to the app folder config and routes what you will see here this is some default setup we don't usually touch it except if you can change the default controller uh, we don't need this for now what you can see though that if we don't type anything the first the first rule then code igniter will assume that you are calling the home controller and index method what we need to do though is we have to say that 
let's change this. Let's make this pages, sorry, pages. Pages index, and we will have to modify our index method. Instead of this, we want to show something from here. So what we can do is we can grab this as it is, bring it here, and say this home. So now if we go back to our project and we just navigate to localhost, voila. So the next thing I would like to do is to make this page accessible without me needing to write pages, show me and all that long, long URL. So we go back to roots and we say that we can create a wild mask here saying by any, so meaning that anything that is written after the slash we want to parse it through pages, controller pages, method show me and map it to this variable. So anything I write here, let's say it will be about, this will translate into this segment. Now let's check if it works. About, and here we go. So now we can create even our links in the project. So let's go back to a header and let's say first of all let's say that um, our C ch let's change the logo CI4 blog let's point that to the home page as well as this link let's point it also to the home page and about us will become about I'm giving relative uh, links so that it work on any page of course we can do we can write the full URL like localhost but I don't see the reason to do this here okay cool so let's just refresh say blog home home about us that looks fantastic Okay guys, so let's wrap it up here and in the next video we will jump to the blog section and we will connect to the database, we will create a form where we will create posts and we will make our website more dynamic. So thank you very much for watching this video, expecting to see you in the second part of this tutorial. Bye bye.